I was working away for a couple of weeks and booked an Airbnb in the countryside in the north of England. It was in the middle of February and had been raining for what felt like constantly for weeks. The Airbnb was a small cottage with a thatched roof. It had an open Inglenook fireplace, which was perfect for the cold evenings. The first night I stayed, I went to bed early. It must have been around 8 o'clock. The cottage was a small two bed and the bathroom was downstairs by the kitchen. Even though I had the fire on, the bedroom was freezing cold and there was no central heating. I started to drift off and I could hear the sound of footsteps coming from outside the cottage. I checked the window and I couldn't see anything. All I could see was the rain bouncing off the pavements. I went downstairs to check that I had locked the door. I was terrified to see that when I came downstairs, the chairs in the living room had moved. I checked the back door by the kitchen to make sure it was locked and I moved the furniture back to where they originally were and went back to bed. I was pretty creeped out, but I had an early start in the morning, so I tried to get some sleep. But the noises kept coming from downstairs. I went onto the Airbnb app to check the reviews of this place. Most of the reviews were positive, but I came across a couple of reviews that said although this cottage is cute and in the heart of the countryside, it is 100% haunted. I turned on the landing light and I went downstairs to see where the noises were coming from. I nervously walked down the steep staircase to see that the furniture had once again moved. I turned the living room light on and walked towards the kitchen to see all of the drawers had now been opened. This started to really creep me out. I was in the middle of nowhere and miles away from home. I went back to bed and I kept the light on all night leaving the drawers in the kitchen open and the furniture where it was, hoping that nothing else would happen and if there was a spirit here, they would now leave me alone. I eventually fell asleep and woke early morning. I went downstairs to make a coffee. I slowly went down the stairs, but I felt more positive as it was now daylight. The furniture had moved back to its original place and all of the drawers were now closed. I messaged the Airbnb host immediately. I said I cannot stay here another night. Your cottage is haunted. She gave me my money back without any question and said I'm sorry this has happened to you. We believe the cottage is haunted by the original owner. He means no harm, but you're not the only guest that has complained about this. I booked a hotel for the rest of my stay, closer to the city, and never returned to the cottage. When I was 17, my family moved 10 miles away from where I grew up. I bought myself a moped so I could still visit my friends. One night, I drove my moped to my friend's house and stayed till late. It must have been till around midnight. I drove home in the pouring rain. The road home was country roads, driving through small villages with little light. I remember the rain coming through my jacket and I couldn't wait to get home to get dry. After around two miles, a car was driving behind me. I remember thinking, if it was the police, I didn't need to worry about speeding, as my top speed was only 30 miles an hour. I soon realised it wasn't the police, and the car headlights were getting closer towards me, almost too close, and he couldn't overtake me, as the roads were pretty narrow. I eventually pulled into a bus stop to let the car go by, but the car pulled into the bus stop behind me and waited there. I encouraged the driver to go past me, but they just waited. After waiting a few moments, I decided to ignore this idiot and continue driving, only for the car to now start tailgating me. He was driving dangerously close to me, almost hitting me off my moped. I honked my horn and encouraged the driver to drive past me. He drove into the next lane, so he was side by side to me. The driver was a man and was looking over to me. He was wearing a cap and I could see him reach over to his passenger seat and pull up what looked like a small handgun. I tried to speed up, but it was pointless. He eventually pulled back into the lane behind me and nudged me with his car. My moped swerved, but I was able to steady myself 
and just stay in control. I knew these roads really well and I was driving close to a village where I could turn into one of the lanes. The car nudged me again and used the force of the car to push me forward. I was still able to stay in control, but only just. I knew I needed to get away from the gunman. I cannot explain to you the fear that I was feeling in these moments. We must have travelled a couple of miles at this point. I was at full throttle and going as fast as the moped could take me. I looked to my side mirror and could see the car was trying to overtake me. As soon as the car went into the next lane, I immediately hit my brakes for the car to then swerve into the grass verge. I knew that in this moment it was the only time I was going to get to get away from him. I twisted the throttle and drove as fast as I could and took a different route. I drove into a cul-de-sac of one of the villages, maybe only a couple of miles away from my house. I pulled into a driveway of some random house and knocked on the door. An elderly couple answered, who luckily let me into the house so I could call my dad to drive home with me. I didn't get a number plate for the gunman, and with the rain, I couldn't tell what car he was driving either. All I knew is that it was an old car. Nevertheless, I sold the moped and decided from that day forward I would take the bus to my friend's house until I could save up to buy a car. When I was really young, I used to live in an upside down house on a hill. It used to be our family home and I loved it. The kitchen and living room was upstairs and all the bedrooms were downstairs with the family bathroom. My bedroom was at the front of the house looking at the driveway. One night we were watching a movie together, the second Harry Potter film. My sister was out for the evening staying at her boyfriend's. It got to around 10 and I went to sleep. I woke up around midnight as my sister came home early after having an argument with her boyfriend. She was soaking wet as it had been raining all night. I went back to bed and I slowly drifted to the sound of the rain hitting the window but I noticed something peculiar. There was a shadow in my room coming from the window. I looked up and to my terror there was a figure standing in the window. I ran to my mum and dad's room. My dad immediately went outside to check the house. He couldn't find anyone. After he came back inside, he said you must have been having a bad dream. I went back to bed, but I couldn't sleep. I kept looking over to my window. I began to have a cold sweat. And to my terror, I could see a figure of a man walking towards my window. I once again ran to my mum and dad's room, which woke my sister. My dad once again checked the house, but this time he took a torch. He noticed footsteps in the porch. He asked my sister, did you come in this way? She said no, I came through the back door. He asked her to ring her boyfriend to see if it was him trying to see her. He answered and said he had been sleeping all night. I could see the look of concern on my dad's face. He waited in my bedroom for me to go to sleep. I slowly drifted and woke to my dad running to the door. I ran to the front door, only for my mum to already be there to see my dad chasing a hooded man off the drive. I can still remember to this day, my dad talking to the hooded man and him saying, I love your house, sir. Can I see inside? This gave me chills. My dad told my mum to ring the police immediately. To this, the hooded man ran away. The police came and spoke to my parents for must have been around an hour. I don't know if the man was ever caught and we never really speak about it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's horror story. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, as I upload every Friday at 6pm, and of course, click on the next video for more horror stories.